Hey everyone, this is Sergeant Danger Cow from the British Sergeant's Mess, and uh, welcome to episode 8 of Chewing the Cud. I had a little problem last week with my pump in my cooling system, decided to, uh, well, retire. And so I've now had to replace it, which I've now done, but it meant I was out of action for five days, which is bloody annoying. But anyway, now done, so uh, all good. This week, uh, we have had the hardline beat to close, um, which has meant that um, everyone's had a jolly. Everyone said either it's rubbish or it's great or whatever. Um, I think now, obviously, the focus is going to switch to, uh, well, I suppose Dragon's Teeth and what the CTE is doing and um, and things like that. So I think, it's, it, you know, there's a certain amount of interest in what the um, community test environment is bringing up. Uh, I think there's a few good things in there, like the visual recoil has now been tweaked, so your your sights no longer bounce disproportionate to where your gun is being shot or aimed. Um, you've got the flinch mechanism has, has dialed back. Now, in case you don't know why that's important, um, the flinch mechanism is when you shoot someone and they start, you know, reacting like they've been shot. Now, in um, in real life, obviously, you have Newton's laws, which mean that if you're making a guy flinch that much, then whatever you're firing um, has to make you do the same thing. So you would have a fucking short sore shoulder if uh, if that was how it worked. But the long and the short of it is that it meant that hitboxes bounced all over the place as well, which meant when you're firing at someone, you've got flash going off your muzzle flash, or you've got sand, or you've got snowstorm, or whatever. Um, it meant they were flinching, which actually made them a harder target to hit, but also gave them the opportunity, as you're not flinching, if they've got a more powerful weapon, like a sniper rifle or a shotgun, just for example, they would be able to shoot you, even though they're flinching all over the place and you're shooting them, which obviously made the game unbalanced and unrealistic. That has now been dialed right back in CTE, which is fantastic, and uh, has actually made the game a lot more enjoyable and, and, and gets rid of a lot of the frustration of what the flinching actually caused. Then you've got the main event or the main implementation of the CTE, which is this triage system. Now, what this means is, again, if you not, you know, if you if you don't really know what's going on, in this you've probably been living under a rock. Um, but uh, essentially, the triage system is a, a dialing down a circle within the res graphic um, that allows you to tell as a medic whether or not someone's worth reviving or, or risking a revive or whether they're just too far away and there's no point trying to trying to chase them down. Now for me that's a brilliant little addition, I'm frankly amazed Dice didn't think of it, but, uh, but well done uh, to the man who did. And uh, yeah, I mean I think uh, that's going to be a very important part of um, uh, sort of, well, BF4 because it's in the CTE now so it'll be into BF4. Hopefully I think probably Dragon's Teeth is when we'll see this stuff put in. Um, so that's, that, that's kind of where the CTE is at, and it's been, it's been quite enjoyable playing on there now. So I have good hope for the way forward for BF4. Now I'm going to talk about spec mode. Spec mode, it, spec mode is still buggy, um, and to be honest, I would like to see spec mode, re well, I would like to see it put into the game so you don't have to exit the game to go into spec mode in a server. Even if it meant that, for example, DICE had um, a, I don't know, passworded slot, so that, uh, or DICE, sorry, don't, not DICE have it, that we have it that DICE puts in there. So admins could password a slot, which means, the, it means they can spectate without having to leave the game. Because, you know what, it'll help against cheaters. And here's, here's a big deal, okay, because cheaters, well, we've seen it with the Punk Buster thing. You know, Punk Buster put in an update and 1,500 people get banned instantly. Now, I know that they're saying, well, we've lifted it now because we think it might be false positives, you know. Now, I'm sorry, but, you know, we all know there are hackers out there. There are. And it's just a fact of gaming. Unfortunate one, but it is a fact. And for me, I was just sat there laughing because I'm, I'm pretty sure that the majority of those people are hackers. And they just got massively pinged, and that's that. So, for me, um, Punk Buster kind of, I don't know, retracted it. Maybe because EA, I've heard rumours actually, that EA said they wanted it removed because they thought it reflected badly on their game. Um, frankly, I think it reflects badly on the people who are cheating, but there we go. Um, so, Punk Buster, um, and again, with this, again, you know, if you want to guarantee yourself a cheat free experience, go to a server that's got good live active admins. Don't go to one of these servers that got vote kick or whatever. I've been on a server 
and um, it was very obvious someone was aimbotting because he was, he was like 902 for one um, and he uh, he was just laughing saying well you know I'm not cheating because I haven't been thrown out and punk I, this is a punk buster server well you know that obviously doesn't, didn't hold water and doesn't hold water but here's the thing we had a vote kick on him and it needed all I think nearly all of the server something like 75% of the server had to agree and people just don't type they can't even be bothered half the people haven't got chat open um, I'm one of those people now after a series of events in which people are just trolling and making you know and they are cheating and they're trolling and I can't be doing that anymore so to stop myself getting wound up about it I've just closed down my chat box for, for good but um, that being said live admins is the way to go because the vote kick thing doesn't work and um, not tooting our own horn, but BSM have got some really good admins. We've got a very strict code of conduct, uh, code of conduct to which we adhere, um, which is on our forums, which you can go to www.britishsergeantsmess.com. Uh, British and um, we we have a, a system of warm before kick, kick before ban. Sometimes we'll kill before the kick as well, but. Um, I think there just needs to be a certain amount of, of realistic expectation from Punkbuster, and right now the realistic expectation is it doesn't work very well. No system really is is you know unbe unbeatable like that. So the best way to beat it is to go to a, ser a, a server where there are humans there who can just go yeah get good nights on you out. Um, so what I wanted the last thing, a couple of last things I want to talk about actually is the counter knifing. Now counter knifing is a very controversial subject. I think it was a gimmick. Um, I think it was put in there because people whined about not being able to stop a knife happening. Um, frankly put, if you get knifed and you get close enough to someone to knife them, you should have the reward of being able to knife them without the cheap thing of suddenly they've got their back to you, they suddenly turn around as you hit F and then they can counter knife you. So for me, it needs to either be got rid of or made harder to do. So maybe what they could do is have the F flash up for a very short time, like, you know, not even half a second, much less than that. And so if you press it uh, or don't press it when the symbol is off the screen, then, um, then you know, you don't get to counter knife. So if you press it and the F hasn't come up yet, then you don't get counter knife. If you, press, if you don't press it or you fail to press it when the F is up, then um, you don't get the counter knife either. And maybe that would be a sort of uh, a, a good middle ground to take. Anyway, that's me for this week. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Ta-ta.